Hello, my name is Ashley Powell, and I will be discussing the different studies I helped conduct with my research methods class this fall semester. I'll try to stay on track. So, our first study, we wanted to talk about something that was relevant to all of us, so we used social media. Then we decided to look more into how does social media impact our well-being and life satisfaction. So, the first study we had, that research question, we had about 450 participants, um, and we posted um, a recruit a recruitment message on each of our social media uses, whether it be social media accounts, excuse me, whether it either be about, either it be on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anything that we, as a class, deemed social media account. Once that was uh, put out there, they did a survey where we took the demographics as far as ethnicity, gender, age, education level. Also, we looked into life satisfaction, uh, positive and neg negative aspects in active social media use. With the active social media use, it was a sliding scale, so that was also um, a limitation for the first study because we couldn't use Chromevox Alpha to determine um, the validity of that piece of the survey. Um, but with everything else, with the Spain scale, we use the Spain scale and also a life satisfaction scale, there was a high Chromevox Alpha, so it was very reliable. It was a very reliable uh, measure to use. With that measure, we saw that there was a correlation between negative and positive social media, negative and passive social media use, and positive affect in active social media use. So, as a person, I hypothesized that active social media use would lead to a higher self esteem because you may be posting more about yourself than you are not. The results from the first study showed that there might be some reason to believe that at more social media use leads to more positive affect and more positive outcomes in life. So with the second study, we wanted to look more into um, causation. And since we couldn't, that first study was more correlational, we wanted to see if there was a cause or something that could suggest a cause. So the second study, we focused in more on the gender identity and also still life satisfaction and well-being and social media use. We had about 130 participants for that, 70% female, 30% males. Um, that is a very high um, participant rate for just in general and then also for males to participate as well. Um, after we analyzed those, those results, we found that there was, there was a correlation between male between gender identity and negative affect with social media use. So when you look at the graph, there was no social media use at all, just they answered random questions, agree or disagree, um, the sky is blue, this color, things like that, things of those nature. Men reported, males reported a more negative affect. When they had to go be active on social media use for five minutes, females reported a more negative but as far as being passive um, on social media, they were eat, they were leveled out. They crossed the graph, and so that also adds to the conversation that I found um, a study that I found from 2017, 2014, excuse me, that females are under a different type of pressure. They may be under a different type of pressure when they go on social media and use social media. So when they are there, they're already put into a negative state, affecting how they feel and reporting after using social media. Whereas with males, they have the different types of pressures. So just not being able to do anything could affect them negative to, negatively as well. With both studies, they obviously do not prove causation. These are not causational studies. We have not studied it enough with a large, with a large enough sample size to determine that this is absolutely true but it does help to add to the conversation that there might be a correlation between gender, how you identify, and how you, how you feel about social media use and how they interact with each other. Thank you.